And so I listened. And one of the biggest lessons I got from that particular conversation, which has, which is something I keep reminding myself of as I go through life, is the story of Ananda and the second arrow. So the story is, and I'm really paraphrasing, <laughs> the story is of the fact that Ananda said there was an, if an arrow hits you straight, um, let's say in the chest or anywhere in the body, it hurts, right? Just imagine right now where you're seated watching this vlog that we threw an arrow at you and it hit, let's say your arm, it hurts, right? What if we bring the second arrow and put it at exactly the same spot in the same exact wound? How painful it be? You're saying, oh, it was painful five out of 10 in the first instance. But now if you put the same, another arrow in the same exact wound, it will hurt 10 out of 10, of course. So the analogy is this, that the first arrow is whatever happens to you in life. Do you know what I mean? The first arrow is, and I think the story they told was a woman who had a son, I think he was a teenager, asked for the car and the woman said no. The son insisted, the mother gave him the car said but be careful on the road don't drive fast when you're when you're on the road be careful and don't drink you know, don't do all these other things be safe on the road the son goes ahead gets, gets an accident and so she's in the hospital telling herself how could you you're a bad mother um it was your fault that this your son is lying in the hospital like this if he dies it's your fault and they were saying the first arrow is the fact that life happened the first arrow is that the accident happened you're already you know already having an arrow is the fact that your son is lying in a hospital because he was driving a car you gave him. That's the arrow. The second arrow is now that blame game you have started. Oh my God, if my son dies, oh my God, this is me. Me, 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 how could I? I, I can't believe I did this. That's the second arrow. So he believes that stuff will always happen in life. You will lose loved ones. You will hate on people. People will hate on you. You will lose a job. You will lose money. You will, you will lose a person you love. Heartbreaks exist. You, every other thing that can happen will happen to you that's just how life is so the first arrow will always be delivered that's not your fault there's nothing you can do about it now the second arrow it is you who delivers it it is you who starts saying it's my fault how could i i think he he broke up with me because of how i look i think i need to lose weight you're delivering a second arrow in the exact same pain point right I think I lost that job because I wasn't good. I think me, 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 you start to blame yourself. That blame game is that second arrow. So I keep reminding myself in life to not deliver the second arrow. So be like Ananda, <laughs> do not deliver the second arrow to yourself. And kind of in the same mental models, the second thing that Dr. Shri Kumar have spoke about that I really love and I keep with myself these days. And if you're my friend, I've told you the story. <laughs> he said, imagine yourself watching a movie right the movie is you know what i like money heist and tokyo and lisbon and everybody is shooting up in the bank gunshots da -da -da -da, everywhere right when the episode ends are there bullet holes in your house no is there a fire and smoke in your house no so you mean they threw a grenade on tv you know light up but there's nothing that happened in your house yes so you kind of have to look at life the same way, like a TV screen or like a movie playing out. Stuff should happen, come and go, come and go, come and go. But that also applies to the good stuff. So even when you get like a good feeling or something has happened or you're in love or things are really going well for you, they should come and go, come and go, come and go. You should not. It's almost like how they tell in the Bible, be still. You just be still and life should just happen. It's a movie. You're watching it unfold in front of you. When the good thing happens, you're like, oh, that's so sweet. That's amazing. Bask in the glory. Enjoy it. When the bad comes, that's terrible. It will pass. It will go. Not when it snows on the, in the movie, you don't freeze, right? So it's the same thing. So when bad things happen in life, let them come and go. Let them come and go. Don't become broken and painful and hurt and eh, you become your problem. And then when the good thing comes, you become the good thing that you can't imagine the good thing living. So you don't want to experience any other good thing because for you, this is the best thing that has happened to you. So there can't be any other. I have to hold on to it. Eh, friend, let it go because there are many other things that have to happen and another good thing comes. Are you with me? Mm, please. <laughs> So yeah, so in your life, watch it like a movie. Let the good come and go, let the bad come and go. That way you're not really attached to emotions. You're experiencing life as it comes, right? The third thing that I've learned, and this was from Michael Singer. Michael, if I have not told you about Michael Singer and his book, The Untethered Soul, I Don't Love You. Yeah. 
So there's a podcast interview where my co-singer was explaining that I think this bird had fallen into the water and was trying to get out. And he remembered that there's a time when, because the current is now swimming against him, and there's a time where he moved a certain way and the, he was able to sort of move and beat the current. But now he can't find, was it the way I, I, I moved left, I moved right, did I stay still, what did I do? And so the more he fights and fusses, the current hits him so hard and almost drowns him. Until one day he's tired and he just decides to float and just let it go, let it be. And in the resting, in the letting go, he found that the current wasn't fighting him anymore. He wasn't fighting the current and the waters were not drowning him. He was just gliding. In fact, he was enjoying it this time. And it's kind of like life, right? The good come, the winds blow. And if you are trying to say, I think this time I should fix myself like this. I think this is how I fixed last time that I managed this problem. I think last time I was able to jump, friend. It's going to whip you. <laughs> so instead of like sort of fighting against the current and you know be still and, and just know that this is coming, this is going to go away. Um, all will be well. If this is a good moment, I enjoy it. Just like how I told you about the other mental model from Dr. Shri Kumar. So if you didn't understand the other one, hopefully this of the bird will always remind you that okay, stuff is happening. I'm about to break down. I'm about to break down. Float. Let it go. Just rather than fighting this, I am going to just breathe. It, you, it, you do you. I, I don't know what you're doing, but me, I'm just being calm. It's hard, but try it. Because actually, it's harder when you're fighting it. <laughs> so rather than fight against the current, just float. Two more things. So one is something I learned from... And I call her my spiritual sister, my spiritual mama. She's called Precious and she's got a ministry called Wise One. It's, and it's about women, really. It's how to empower women to know who God is. And so if you don't subscribe to that, it's fine. But she's, she has this thing where she tells all the women who she talks to that you need to go within because you have all the answers. So you know how you call someone, Precious, can you believe life is not good? Oh my God, I'm sad. Da, da, da. She's like... Okay, mama, go within. You have all the answers. And you're like, I called you to give me answers. I didn't call you to tell me. I have the answers. But she's like, no, you do. You do. God has given you all the answers you need for life. God has given you all the tools you need for life. So go within. When something happens to you, ask yourself, first you, go within and give your time to give yourself time to think and say, how can I manage this? How can I solve this? Which is not the first thing we all do. Most of us, when things happen to us, we call our best friend, we call our mother, we call precious. <laughs> With then yell that you go within but it's it's worked for me yeah when i listened and i started to apply it you'd be surprised you can actually decide on a lot of things without involving other people you have all the answers and the tools and also it's okay to make mistakes your your answer or your solution to something might be a mistake but then what do you do you learn you know so Try that. Go within. When something happens to you, instead of saying, Flavia, what do you think I should do? Sandra, what do you think I should do? Tatu, what do you think I should do? Go within. I'm going to sound like precious now. Go within. You have all the answers. The last one is that a lazy day isn't a bad year. Hmm, someone should have sung this song for me. In fact, if you can put it on a t-shirt for me, please do. A lazy day isn't a bad day. I used to get so overworked so burned out and i just feel like okay i'm tired but i need to keep going because i don't want i don't want to be called lazy i don't want to give up i don't want to let go i don't want to look like i'm not doing anything i don't i don't want a lazy day but a lazy day sometimes means you're resting your body you're resting your mind it just means you just chill but I, we were not meant to be like that why you understand you're not a machine so it's okay to say today i don't feel like doing anything i'd like to relax i'd like to chill take care of myself take oh just by the way sometimes self-care is just chilling there like this just being nothing you know or look at uh, a phone or go you know just some apps or read a book or just a lazy day is fine 
it doesn't mean that you've had a bad year because you've had a lazy day and it took me a long time to understand this because now i give myself space to think space to rest space to do nothing 